right now I'm right outside the U.S. Capitol building where Benjamin Netanyahu is speaking in front of Congress in a joint address and is being met with thousands of people mobilizing against him from all sectors of the working class. You have tenants, you have unions, you have artists, you have students. Um, all workers are united um, in this front against Netanyahu, an exceptionally unpopular politician who is actively carrying out genocide. Unions representing six million workers collectively, almost half the unionized workforce, stood against U.S. military aid to Israel and stood for a ceasefire. And this represents an enormous um, act in uniting movements of the working class against Israeli genocide. I think it's important, important for an end to military aid to Israel because U.S. taxpayers basically are funded a genocide. And as a taxpayer in the U.S., we don't believe that our, our money that goes to tax dollars should fund the murder of innocent Palestinian civilians, families, children, mothers, um, fathers, um, sisters and brothers. It has to stop. It must stop. Those same tax dollars would do so much better in the U.S. helping actual working people than it would go to um, funding basically a genocide in Gaza. I think that it's unjust that like our taxes are being paid to like gen on genocide when especially like tenants don't even have enough in New York and we should have more like mobility and like agency in the say of how our money is being spent and we should have more say in like our freedom and especially like the fight for Palestine is not just a fight for like Palestine itself but it's a fight for liberation for like the whole entire world. Many unions including ours has taken a position for a median and permanent ceasefire and I think the letter that seven uh, of our unions part of the National Labor Network for a ceasefire have sent to the White House is basically an escalation. It's the next step, which is to say that a ceasefire has not been realized, has not been actualized, and in order to actually make that happen, not only do we have to keep negotiations going and agree to the framework, we have to also materially intervene, which means ending uh, arms shipments to Israel. Benjamin Netanyahu is responsible for the genocide in Gaza that left the whole population homeless, displaced, starved killed, bombed, and tormented. Therefore, you know, we have to raise our voices as doctors, as nurses, as a medical community to speak up and oppose our politicians who are inviting him instead of honoring the arrest warrant that has been or in the process of being issued by the International Criminal Court. Workers pay taxes and the last thing our taxes should be used for is to kill and maim starve innocent men, women, and children of another country. And, it's, and the workers are deeply affected in Palestine and the unions are deeply affected in Palestine. So we're glad to be out here in our last convention last week with the American Postal Workers Union with 2,000 delegates. They voted to, to press our government to end military aid to Israel as the only way to get a permanent ceasefire. And our government should use that leverage to answer the cries of humanity rather than cause more war. As a, you know, someone who's part of the labor movement, this is so inspiring for me because the labor movement unites you know, working class people from all walks of life, from all different backgrounds, from all different political backgrounds. You know? And so um, you know, it's much more challenging in a way to bring all of those people together and to stand together for sol in solidarity with Palestine. And the fact that the movement is doing it and the fact that that movement is growing just points to how universal the struggle for Palestine is. It's a struggle that every single person of the working class, no matter where you're from, what your background is, this, this is important to you and this is matters to all of us. As we were crossing a road, um, people were exercising their legal right to mobilize. A number of people in the crowd were tear gassed um, brutally. Um, we got hit a little bit. Um, we're going to keep following the march to see if there's more brutality. Marching and the police deployed tear gas. They deployed stun grenades on our people. Our police forces are training with the IDF. They're learning tactics with the IDF and they're using it to deploy it on the people because they're afraid of the will of the people and they're afraid of the mass movement for Palestine. So they resort to violence to brutalize our people just as they brutalize us in Gaza. We are here. We are here in DC marching with tens of thousands of people that are asserting their right to march and to protest and we were blockaded by tens of police that are here to protect a war criminal and use our tax dollars to protect that war criminal while leveraging the people that they choose
with the contact us. We just wrapped an exhilarating action here in Washington, D.C. in front of the United States Capitol building as war criminal Netanyahu was addressing a joint session of Congress. Multiple arrests just happened. People were brutalized by police and pepper sprayed while they were exercising their First Amendment right to protest. But in defiance, the crowd outside of Union Station just replaced the American flags with Palestinian flags, proudly proclaiming that the people in this country do not stand for the United States complicity and genocide. People's Dispatch will continue to cover the movement for Palestine on the ground in the United States, no matter the repression and no matter the brutality.